Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, Tom. What's today? Today's Thursday. It doesn't feel like Thursday. I guess that was because Monday was kind of the whole Memorial Day thing. And some of us actually tried to observe that. And you guys, I know, work. Um, we worked a little bit, but not, not a normal schedule. Anywho, um, almost to the weekend. Hey, Bridget, how are you? Um, a lot's happening in the uh, federal government as it pertains to PPP and, you know, House of Representatives was busy today and they've uh, created some work that the Senate's uh, going to have to deal with next week. We'll jump in and talk about that in a little bit once uh, we uh, give everybody a chance to, to hop on. But it's all good news. And uh, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, it's getting better. What's going on in the world? Kind of, kind of depends on your perspective, though, too, Tom, right? Well, I mean, some of the stuff is like, eh, eh. I mean, I, I, I do like a lot of the stuff, but uh, I guess that nothing that they're doing, changing, talking about is actually bad. It's just frustrating because I was operating under a different set of rules. And so I then having them change it's kind of like all of a sudden i think we used this one before you're playing monopoly and then halfway through the game they say oh you know what huh it's now going to cost 12 dollars on top of whatever your choice your price is for a hotel that's not the rule it's, it's worse than that. It's like playing baseball, not knowing if you're supposed to run to first base or third base. No, that's better. <laughs> that's where do I go? I'm not sure. Although, actually, in that case, it might be better, right? Because if you ran to first base and they changed the rule, wow, there you are on third base. <laughs> okay. Although, I guess if you ran all the way around and you're on third base and they change it, now you're on first again. Yeah, that well, would be better. They call you out. but. Um, you know, the glass is still, I mean, in, in it, it's all free money. Yeah, <laughs> all free money. And we, 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 we've kind of gotten in the habit of whenever the most recent news comes out, it's kind of like, okay, well, that's it. At some point, we've got to come to the realization that this is an ongoing story. It's not yeah. evergreen. It's like, this isn't the end. And yeah. they're going to be, you know, is there going to be more money down the road? I mean, possibly. I mean, here's the, here's the skinny on that. And I think this is real. I heard um, the, the CEO of Bank of America being interviewed this morning, Monahan, forget his first name. doesn't really matter, though. And he said for every one of his depositors and one out of every two Americans has a bank account at Bank of America. So, I mean, they're like the biggest bank in the country. For every one of his depositors with $5,000 or less in the bank, their average bank balance is 40% higher now than it was three months ago before the whole COVID thing hit, which means that the stimulus money has made its way out there in terms of, you know, the you know economic stimulus checks and all that. They haven't spent it yet. So, so that's, and plus it also means that there's, the least the belief is there's a number of people who are drawing unemployment and they're getting the extra 600 bucks a week and they're making more money now than they did before they had a real job. Um, a lot of the, you know, the, the unemployment is supposed to dry up towards the end of, 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 of July, or at least the federal portion of that, that things are going to start getting getting a lot more crazy and those bank accounts they believe are going to start start you know going down at that point and you know what's next for the government you know the whole the whole thing is the government's invested i forget like maybe three trillion dollars in all this stimulus so far and if that's only 80 percent of the solution or 70 percent of the solution are they just going to stop and let it crash at that point no they're going to go for another trillion bucks right yeah Governments, state governments, local governments, uh, their fiscal year runs up September, October. It varies a little bit, but a lot of them are just way upside down and they're not going to have the money to continue to keep everybody on board the way they are now. They're thinking is there going to be a ton of layoffs there. 
things like the airlines have got, you know, they were bailed out and basically contractually, they have to keep all their employees until September. But they've all said when September comes, they're going to be having deep cuts. And there's other industries that are kind of in the same boat that there's more money coming, folks. I can't tell you exactly how, and I can't, you know, tell you what that's going to mean to us exactly. But, you know, this story is, is still being written. So more new, good news is coming from, from Congress this week, and, and it should be whatever they're working on now should be law next week. We'll, we'll jump into this in more detail, but that's not the end of anything. That's just uh, more yet to come after that, I'm sure. Well, and, and like you said, Tom, they're, they're improving on everything that they're doing, at least in their minds. They're, they're trying to make it better. They're trying to fix, fix the problem. Um, at no point in time has anybody said, you know what? Nah, we've given them too much money. Let's let them crash and burn after all. I think that would be the better option. That's not happening. No. So, so bottom line is it, it's end up better for us. We're just going to have to wrap our brains around it again, just like we've had to do every single time, right? We got a little bit of a reprieve there without getting a bunch of new information over the course of a few weeks, anything that was substantial that really made any kind of big change. So I think we're just going to have to, you know what? I think we're all going to get really good at accepting change through all of this, <laughs> or at least better. Yeah, we have the opportunity to get good. If practice makes perfect, we should at least be getting good, right? Yeah, yeah no kidding. At least better. <laughs> can't, can't be getting worse. Hey, Denise, I don't have you. You're not showing up on my on my window for some reason. Oh, actually, there you are. I lied. Uh, so there's a new thing that's happening on Facebook Live when I'm on my phone, Tom, because I usually come on here because I can't comment uh -huh. on the thread. And everything is transcribed. Now, did you know that? Transcribed like. Like, can you see it? It's typed. Like as you talk, you see how it's oh, typing? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I did. I noticed that the other night. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, so Heather likes your shirt. <laughs> she likes my hair and your shirt. Yeah, well, this Heather, is. Aren't you this I is think a, Heather said, go ahead. What, I, wear this, I wear this shirt like five days a week. Only five, Tom? Well, maybe, maybe six. You never know. <laughs> I've, I've been there a few times when I've seen you wearing it six days a week. So maybe you try to try to hit five. <laughs> that I would believe. Well, let's let's get into it, Tom. I'm excited to talk about the PPP and how it's working. And oh, I did want to say something that today I was um, one of, this is about idle and we're gonna get into PPP. So I heard two really interesting piece of in, pieces of information today. Your terms on your idle loan may not be the same as mine. All of the terms are not the same. Isn't that mind blowing? I did not know that. So some people have different terms than other people do. That was kind of crazy for me. Um, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is that the new information is that your interest does begin accruing one of, no, yes, it does begin accruing when your account is funded. Okay, so that's brand new information. So the 3.75% so the interest is spinning right now. Right now. So I know some people that are like, well, that's a whole different story. That's going to cost me $5,500 at the end of the year. And nope, I'm returning it now. I have money and I don't need this. So it's just another thing to consider, y'all. I, so, I thought we had articles in, that we've looked at previously, though, that suggested that they didn't start accruing until 11 months. Yeah, we, we did. We saw that in multiple places. But the newest piece of information gotten from the congressional site says um, that it is accruing uh, beginning the 
that Tom's looking it up right now. I want that information. Yeah, so, so that's a big change there. Uh, another piece of information around that uh, was uh, how how did that work? I can't remember. Let, let me let me think of how it worked, you guys. I'm I'm mixing it up in my head with TPP information, and I don't want to do that. So, yep, idle money interest. Okay, it had to do with the. Okay, so with the new PPP rules, this is why it's mixed up in my head. The new PPP guidance, not rules. The new PPP guidance says that. Your the ten thousand dollar grant that they were talking about rolling the ten thousand dollar idle grant or whatever your amount was based on your employee number. They were talking about rolling that into the PPP um, money so that you wouldn't be like double dipping. But it sounds like that is uh, they changed the wording just enough that there might be some opportunities where you're going to get both of those. So don't don't have an answer yet, but that's what I heard. All right, what you got there, Tom? Payments are deferred for a year, however, interest accrues during the deferment. So that implies what you just said. But we're paying interest on right now. So, that's making me a little bit happier that I didn't get the five hundred thousand. Yeah, but that's all that's almost six grand, right? Uh, well, it's almost six grand for the 150, I think. Yeah, I don't need a calculator for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, okay. What was the last thought you I was looking, I was looking at this up. You were so I, freaked out about yeah. that. <laughs> what was your last? Point? The other thought was that they changed the language around the idle advance again. And now they are, uh, no, with, with, um, in the new uh, Heroes Act, they changed it so that there is opportunity possibly for us to have the full PPP monies and the $10,000 or whatever your grant number was on top of that money. It's not set yet, but it looks like that is um, a, a potential thing that could be happening. So that was that's another 10 grand of for for of grant money for basically. Giving. Right. If you got both, if you got the PPP and you got the idol, potentially you could have another 10 you could have $10,000 or whatever your idle monies were, whatever your advance was, you could have that much more money today than you had uh, a week ago. All right. So here's the latest and greatest. Um, the House today passed almost unanimously. They had uh, one uh, representative from the state of Kentucky, I think, who voted against this. But uh, every, every other uh, representative was for it. Um, and basically, this bill takes the forgiveness period and extends it from eight weeks to 24 weeks or till to the end of, of this year to, to December 31st, whichever ever one comes first. It also reduces the amount of those monies that have to go towards payroll from 75% to 60%, meaning more can go to um, other, other things. And exactly. Yeah. And I've seen. Okay, but this is one where there was some confusion earlier on a call I was on. So I just want to clarify this real quick. That doesn't mean that if you spent more money than you had originally planned, that less will be forgiven. That's not what it means. What it means is that the amount will still be forgiven. All of the amount will be forgiven as long as you spend it in the, or as long as you follow all of the rules, et cetera. But you don't have to spend the whole 75%. You could, you could spend 60%. And still have all of the monies forgiven. Of course, you got to have your FTE numbers and all that stuff. But it's good news for the people that are like, "Oh no, no, it's good news." 
No, yeah, you can spend 100% on payroll if you want to. Yeah. But rather than 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 having to to go no lower than 75%, you can go all the way down to 60. Yeah, Leslie, good news for her. Yeah. Yeah. This article here actually this is uh Bloomberg and this does even a little better job of explaining what's going on. Um 24 weeks, we just said that, uh, or into the year, whichever comes first. Businesses would also have up to five years instead of two to repay the monies owed on the loan and could use a greater percentage on rent and other approved non payroll expenses. That goes up to 60%, or, you know, as we just, just said. Um, This has to go to the Senate. The Senate's uh, not uh, in session now. They won't be back until next week. They're fully expected to take it up next week. The House Majority Leader, um, Steny Hoyer, said that uh, he thinks that the House and the Senate can, can reach consensus quickly. The expectation is that by the end of next week, this will be law because it's at that point that that initial eight week period since the first loans hit like that first week of April, they need to, they want to get this in place before anybody's eight week, eight week period expires. So I the, wonder why though, Tom, I mean, there is such a long period of time before anybody actually needs to make a decision. Well, I don't understand what the big hurry is. Um, Evidently, if your eight-week period expires the way the law is written, then basically you're off the clock and nothing more can be forgiven. But if they can extend it before anybody falls out of that window, then... You they, should be able to get all of it forgiven, with no problem. Right. There um, shouldn't be anybody worried about having it all forgiven at this point. Marco Rubio is a senator from Florida, and he's uh, like leading the charge on this, or one of, one of the, the people leading the charge on these changes on the Senate side. Thinks a couple of things need to be changed. Um, where is this? The House language creates a problem for companies that use less than 60% of the loan on payroll. The current program allows for partial forgiveness for 75%, but the new wording says if you don't hit 60, you get nothing forgiven. Oh, that's a big change then. Not just a penalty, but it went from a penalty to zero. We, I mean, with that extension, I can't imagine why you wouldn't be able to spend that 60%. Yeah, for, and especially for house cleaning companies. I don't, <laughs> it would be... I'm not That's sure not how hard. your typical house cleaning company could spend more than 40% on it on non-payroll things and, and stay within the guidelines. Which brings me to a question that we have here, Tom. Uh, Robin wants to know, do the other things stay the same? Uh, like in the past, business insurance was included. Is that still the same? Did you read anything about that? I think all that's still being hashed out. We saw an article earlier in the week that suggested that they wanted to broaden up what that 25% or maybe now 40% can be used for. And one senator even suggested allow uh, businesses to make investments so they can in their business so they can, you know, ensure their, 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 their long-term, you know, viability. Nice. That and would be amazing. They didn't explain what that was, but that's like, Gee, I'm going to invest in a, in a you know company car. <laughs> that could be forgiven. So I have a hard time imagining that 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 they would go that far. But to answer Robin's question, I think they're you know right now they're hashing around a lot of things. But at the end of the day, it looks like it's it's going to be a lot more good than it is than bad. So chances are good. Yes, Robin. But remember, so everybody that um, is wondering if this is going to be forgiven or if that's not going to be forgiven, keep in mind that even if some of those other expenses are not forgiven, 
that you will still have money in your, your bank account for the monies from the monies that were forgiven because you didn't have to pay those out. So they'll be sitting in your account waiting for the things that are not forgiven. So just, just a reminder, because it's such a weird, it's like a Mobius strip. You know, when you start thinking about it, everything turns right around back. I don't know if everybody knows. I hope everybody knows what a Mobius strip is. <laughs> it's one of those things that you um, take a piece of paper, you twist it and put it together and you can draw a line without ever lifting your pencil. You can draw a line on both sides of the strip. So it's kind of like that when we are going through this stuff. We do have a, I don't know if you want to hit this yet, Tom, but Andrew has a question about um, FTEs. Is this a good time to explain how the, how the FTE numbers are going to work now? Yeah, we can jump into that in, in just a second. The one other thing here that Rubio is taking exception to, and they don't explain it well here, but I read this somewhere else. He says that, um, the new certification for inability to rehire is too broad and would give businesses less incentive to rehire. The House version of this basically dumbed down the requirements to say that we offered somebody a job and they didn't come back, but so I get to count them as part of my FTE anyway. Part of the argument was that this is going to be hard for businesses to keep all of this straight and they wanted to make it easier for businesses to basically, you know, meet the number to get it forgiven. And Rubio on the Senate side is like, yeah, but if you're just basically making it easier for companies not to hire people, then maybe that's going too far. So this is some of the stuff that they're going to be wrangling with next week. All right. So not, not completely set yet, but yeah. we may have a little bit more information, Andra. What, uh, what, what's, the, what's our FTE question? All right. So uh, a lot of her people are like 25 to 35 hours. And I, I might have the numbers wrong. But she just needs some guidance on how are we counting FTEs now. And yes, Andra, FTE does stand for a full-time equivalent. So um, she just wants some guidance on that real quick. Hmm. Well... It's I, it's pretty easy what they have right now. It just gets confusing when you start thinking about the past and, you know. Yeah. If you want to do some crazy math, you can still do it the traditional way. But basically, they're saying if somebody works 40 hours a week, you can count them as one FTE. If they work less than 40 hours a week, you count them as 0.5 FTE. And you're, you're applying that same standard pre-PPP and during PPP. So net net, I think that new simple formula for the most part gives us better outcomes. If somebody mm -hmm. typically worked 32 hours a week prior to PPP, maybe we're not quite as, as, as busy as we were, but now they're working 28 hours. They can't get below 75% of where they were before because then that kind of messes up that other, you know, calculation of making sure their pay is at 75%. But you know, you're st that it's still like equal 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5. And, and that number is, even if it's 39 hours, it's oh, 0. 0.5. It's, yeah. Still 0. 0.5, anything below 40. So one of the new things that I saw was that we now are going to be having to track it weekly though. So um, having to do that math on a weekly basis, and so that that's different. Uh, initially, they had that June 30th date. And I don't know if this weekly thing is because they're looking at getting rid of that June 30th date. I, I don't I don't know about that. Do you have any insight into that, Tom? Mm -mm. It's news to me. OK, so so I'm not I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, when when we're filling out our paperwork, we're going to see all of these things. Right. Um, but I, I'm not exactly sure how it plays out. Oh, there was one other concern on the call I had today. And, you know, we had that three hour MMA call today, Tom. And the, one of the things that the HR expert was saying in that group is, um, oh, totally lost my train of thought. What, what was I even talking about? 
changes to the 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 form for forgiveness for for PPP? Yeah, about the the tracking on a on a. Oh, I know what it was. Sorry, one of the people on that call was stressed out because she was thinking, but I already turned in my numbers when I applied. That's not what they're looking at, y'all. So um, other people were like, yeah, me too, me too. You haven't yet. When you are uh, filling in your paperwork and you're reporting everything, that's when you're going to be giving the number from the different uh, time periods. So, you know, and you have to choose the different time periods, but that's when you'll give your FTE count from the past and the FTE count from the future. So don't have to worry about that. We had a lot of people worried about that. But this is the form that, you know, this is a link here off of uh, the Cleaning Business Today uh, resource page. It stands to figure this is going to change again with this, uh, you know, new yep. bill that, that, that that's being passed. Yeah, I don't see how it cannot. There's too many, too many changes that affect it. So I don't, I don't see how it's not going to pass. I mean, not going to change. I learned something today from a banker friend, kind of, kind of tangent, but but yet related. It's uh, related to, to 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 PPP funds. Um, it's kind of funny. He said that, uh, and this we, we we've got a few different banks that, that that we work with, but this is this is uh, one that we get a couple of PPP loans through, and said that they've kind of just dug out of, of the whole initial process and now they're trying to reach back to companies seeing if there's anything that they can do to help them, you know, manage the PPP funds, wanting to know if we wanted to set up a separate bank account for that. And it's like, well, you know, I can see how that would be helpful. And he's like, I just want to, you know, the idea is just to make sure that you don't spend the money on, 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 on things that you're not supposed to, and then wind up having to pay it back and not have it back being concerned that really you've only got 18 months to pay it back is, is, is kind of the, the, the thinking. It's like, well, you know, that's getting ready to change to uh, five years. And he didn't know that. So I took him to cleaning business today and started walking him through all of this. And it's like, next time we need to know something about, you know, PPP, we're going to reach out and go to cleaning business today and figure that out. But one of the things I learned from him was that, if a loan is completely forgiven, they get 5% of that loan amount back is kind of. <laughs> yes. That's some of the best news I've heard in a long time. As opposed. So they're, they're being incentivized to approve all of our loans. So as long as we're not doing something <laughs> illegal, they are absolutely incentivized to say, yep, that passes. That's a good deal. Yeah. And I, I won't, I won't say the name of the bank or disclose or anything else, but yeah, it was, that was the whole tone of the discussion. It's like all the guidance he's given is unless it's just blatant fraud, we need to try to give these loans because we have an economic incentive to do so. Yeah. Well, and on top of that, they had already said the thing about the, you know, companies that were receiving less than a million dollars were they're going to be maybe not rubber stamped, but they're not being audited. They're they just have, being they have resources. Yeah. Because so, was it six or seven years worth? Of, I forget the exact number of SBA loans, some a dollar amount. Historically, they did like seven years worth of loans. And I may be wrong. It may be six, might be eight, but it's just a number of years over just what an eight week period. Yeah. Or they'll never, never catch up. Yes. Crazy. Yeah. And, and remember Megan was telling us that the banks are currently hiring people and that's going to be their job. They, they have no banking experience at all. They're just no loan experience. They're just like going to be taught what to look for and they'll be looking for that. And yep, there it goes. So uh, that was encouraging as well. Um, Linda says, Tom, so if I had 10 employees, but they all work less than 40 hours, then I technically have five FTEs, but no worries because I haven't reported yet. 
And, it, yeah. and, and the pres presumption would have been that you would have had five FTEs prior to the PPP funds. So five and five, you're at 100 percent employment. And that that that's the tricky piece is just making sure that you have the same number. So this extension from eight weeks to 24 weeks, um, that how how does that play in with the FTEs, Tom? Do you know the FTE count? And no, they haven't changed that June 30th date, but it sounds like there's really not a lot of option there that they're going to have to. Yeah. And that's an interesting question. I guess the devil's in the details on some of that. If you've hired people just to make the full employment number and you really didn't have productive work for them, then, you know, it's like the thinking before was, well, I'll just eat it between now and, you know, the end of June just to make the number. But if I have to go another eight time, you know, Another another sixteen weeks to 16 do. That. Weeks. Yeah, that's like yeah. three months. Yeah. That's like three and a half, almost four months. I don't know. Um, we need. We I don't need know where that money's money. coming from. Yeah, and it might <laughs> just just thinking out loud. It might make sense to adjust your headcount today, knowing that you know, you got a much longer runway to get up to the number that you want to go and, and kind of keep some, some dry powder in terms of what PPP monies are, 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 are left. And really it's not even PPP. At that point, it's just money. You had a bucket of money that was given to you by PPP and you're spending that along with other money within your business. And at the end of the 24 week period, you can point to you know the dollars that make the most sense and say this is what I spent my PPP money on. I think yeah, after twenty four weeks, the, the chances of anybody not in our industry. Um, is there anybody that's just still not open though? And I mean, I know there are. Like here in Washington, we're we're not technically open yet. Cleaning companies aren't residential cleaning, so I guess if they're, you know. Um, closed a lot longer, they could sort of be dealing with the same problem just further on down the line. But I don't know. It's, I think I think the bigger issue is just meeting the, the, the headcount numbers, but you've got a longer runway to do it. So, you know, we really, really, we need to wait until the new version of this mess comes out to know for sure, you know, what the what the new formula is going to be to qualify, but it sounds like that the house version of this is making it easier to qualify for full forgiveness. That's, that's, that's part of, 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 of what's in there. And, you know, once you, once you, once you got your arms wrapped around that, you know, I wouldn't spend more money than I needed to today, knowing that, you know, I've got another 16 weeks to spend the max amount. Yeah. Uh, so two more pieces of information that I thought were great, um, kind of along the same lines, is first is maybe maybe don't be making a lot of changes, right? Um, try as much as you can to continue doing business the way you've been doing it, because the when they're when they're building new things like this, they don't build the law for the people that are trying to. Um, um, take advantage. I mean, that's just a very small consideration. Uh, it's built to help as many possible people or as many people as possible. So if you are running your company in a legitimate way and you continue doing that, that's probably where you're going to get, not guaranteed, but probably where you're going to get your best advantage. And I'm going to give an example. So when this uh, PPP money first came out and initially you guys might remember that how how they paid out was either or, or what was going to be forgiven was money that was either accrued or paid. It wasn't both. Right. Do you guys remember that? So I changed my pay. I changed my pay period from biweekly to weekly. And I kind of shot myself in the foot. Right. Do you guys see how I shot myself in the foot? Because if I 
if my money was deposited into my account on June 1st, just an example, and my pay period ended maybe on, on May 20th, but my first pay period or pay day was June 2nd, that entire two weeks money would have been forgiven. Additionally, on the back end, if I we have all of our uh, monies through the end of July, July 30th, but my payday isn't until August 15th, all of that money is also forgiven. So I could have gotten minus the gap, right? Whatever your your overlap gap is, you know, a week or like for us, it was a, a week. We can get like four weeks, two weeks on, as much as two weeks on the front end, two weeks on the back. But now, because I changed my pay, that I can only be forgiven for a week on the front and a week on the back. So sometimes, you know, we don't know all of the things that are going to happen. We don't know the changes, which is what we keep talking about. So some, some of the things you might end up kind of shooting yourself in the foot around without even meaning to. So one of one of the things we discussed in weeks prior was, you know, if you didn't think that you had a practical way of spending all your PPP funds, you know, hire that person to do your your build your marketing material or your website or you know, not silly stuff stuff that are beneficial, but you wouldn't just do under normal circumstances. Now, with another six potentially sixteen weeks to spend the money, then that could have been. Homes that you could have been cleaning with no cost to good soul. Yeah. So we should all we should all get rid of our website designer tomorrow. Yeah. I, I'm I, not, I'm not, I take that back. Strike that from the record. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's something to think about. Because really, now we want to jump on it and make more changes fast, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, we just got through saying, don't you know, do silly. Right. Stuff. But sometimes it, we're 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 acting with the information that we have right now. But I, I do I do agree with what Tom said. We've got to keep keep reminding ourselves that this is not over. Even when the final rules come out. So when the final information came out for the CARES Act, I bet it was like, okay, good, we're done. Right now we're gonna have the Heroes Act. We're done. So. Y'all, it's not over. It's not over till it's over. So we, we got to, me, I know, this is this is me, all of, all of you high eyes out there, right? Heather and, uh, well, y'all know who you are. All of you, don't just jump on every little thing and move so fast, right? <laughs> Think it out a little bit more. Maybe give it just a little bit of time. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, I heard today from somebody in MMA group that this was my diva hair. I was like, diva hair? I feel like this is the same hair I always wear, but it's the straight bangs. Yeah, you're the third person now to comment on my hair, so I guess it's different. All right, so Leslie wants to know, how many self-employed gig workers are willing to be employees, though? Maybe right now. I think that Models on this, it's going to be harder for companies to hire people as gig workers, as 1099, you know, subcontractors, because there's a lot of gig workers out there who are drawing unemployment insurance right now who never paid into it. They're, they're, the company they work for never paid into it. And I don't think Congress is going to allow that to happen again. So I think. I've seen that several different places. I've I've heard congressmen, you know, on the record say that we're gonna we're gonna be changing that. We're not gonna allow that to happen again. So, you know, I guess it's a matter of you know, do I want to? If I'm a gig worker, do I want to be an employee? I think I think the other part of that is, if I'm a company, am I even going to be allowed to hire gig workers? What's that going to look like? And if I do, it's gonna there's going to be more strings attached. It's not just a gig worker. I've got more of a commitment to them than just giving them a paycheck and saying they're on their own regarding, you know, all benefits and all taxes and all whatever. I don't think it, uh, we're going to be allowed to play that game moving forward. Yeah. 
it sure seems like it's going to be a whole heck of a lot harder. That's for darn sure. Uh, Sarah just jumped on. Did they officially extend the PPP? No, Andrea, you are correct. Uh, passed the House, but it still needs to get past the Senate. So we're still waiting, but that's what it that's what it's written as right now, Sarah. Tw up to twenty four weeks. Again, but, but, but people on both sides of of you know the House and the Senate. It seems like everybody is is kind of in agreement that uh, the Senate will come back in session next Monday, and the thinking is that they'll get this thing worked out. I mean, they can always go sideways, but everybody's talking like by the end of next week it'll be law. Like it should be easy. So if they're thinking it's going to be easy, the assumption is, you know what they say about assumptions, but the assumption is that they're not going to come back with a whole other set of of numbers and criteria and guidance information, right? They're going to have to be somewhat close if they think they're going to be able to make it happen fast. Well, Steny Hoyer, the um, majority leader in the House, said that you know, they should be able to work out any differences really quick, that it, it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay. Uh, Amelia, I have a new hire to upgrade my website and put him on payroll. So that should work. Yeah, absolutely. You you can do that. The only reason we were talking about this is because with the extension, we we might not have put those people on payroll, and we we might have you know changed how we're going to pay them and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm paying my um, my web guy much more money than I may have paid him to do the work uh, over time. But on the flip side. If you guys don't know who Riley is, Riley Potochnik, you need to look him up. And the reason I'm saying that is he's working like a dog for that money. I mean, I think that a lot of people would be like, oh, okay, it's PPP money. Yay, it's just a big bonus for me. Not him. He's like every day shooting me information. Hey, Liz, this is what I did today. This is it. Check this out. Go look here. What do you think of this? So I, I hopefully, Amelia, whoever you hired is as amazing as Riley is. Anybody that knows his dad can probably um, speak to why he's such an amazing guy, too. Uh, okay, business as usual, Marsha. Yeah, good for you, right? My hair is shiny. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, my hair is getting a lot of kudos today, Tom. You're going to have to pick up your shirt game. The whole thing. <laughs> You know, web guy though, or the marketing guy, or whatever you you know, fill in the blank uh, person is you know. Several weeks ago, we said, "Well, gee, I've got these PPP funds, but maybe I'm only at fifty percent of of capacity. I'm not going to be back at full employment. I'm going to have monies that I'm not going to be able to use within an eight week period. Why don't I get my website built while I'm at it?" Made perfect sense. But go from eight weeks to twenty four weeks. I can easily, you know, just, just by cleaning homes, you know, yeah. put that money to good use. And so, okay, well, maybe I don't need that nice a website. I, you know, I don't know. And I didn't need to bonus out my people to the extent that I bonused them out, right? Mm -hmm. There I was um, doing two things. I was spending PPP money and I was combating the unemployment, right? The unemployment money. So it's not the um, the money that I'm paying out. It's not as gen generous as the unemployment money, but there was opportunity to earn like a good enough chunk of change that people were like, "Oh, okay, never mind. I I'm definitely keeping my job then." Um, all right. So Sarah, um, you got on a little bit late. So yeah, the initial thing was yeah, it kind of sucks for us early PPP people, but it actually doesn't. It doesn't doesn't really hurt us at all, except for that one thing that Tom just said about like, if you overpaid like your website guy, that you didn't really need to do because you have more time. Or but other than that, all of that, it was like, if you knew, if you knew that you had yeah. 24 weeks as opposed to eight, you would have probably been more frugal. A lot more frugal, a lot more. Yeah. Um, Andre is asking a question, says her 56 days is up next week, wants to know, you know, what do we need to change? I can't, don't think that we can responsibly prescribe anything. It's not a hundred percent that this is going to become law. It looks likely, but it's not law. We don't know the details. You know, we're just, you know, 
they're still hashing it out. You know, the like Senate and the House don't know the details yet because they haven't negotiated a final bill yet. So I, I guess the best thing to do is just kind of see how much PPP money you think that you've actually spent so far, how much is left, and be thinking, well, gee, if I have another 16 weeks to put whatever's left to work, what's the most uh, logical and the way I can do that to get a, get a maximum return off of it? which typically is cleaning homes with it and, you know, with, with, with a zero or almost zero cost of goods all. So um, uh, I love your plan, the plan that you have right now, Andra. I think that's a great plan. Meet with your accountant on Monday. Yes, that's smart. That's, that's, that's a really, really good plan. Uh, Linda, have you guys heard of, oh, have you heard of this, Tom? Have you guys heard of possible legislation ending the weekly $600 for unemployment and giving $450 to those who have returned to work? Have you heard anything about that? Wow. I have not, but boy, I would love to see whatever yeah. you're looking at or. Any source that, that, that you have that speaks to that, I would, uh, I would love to see it because that's, that's a new one. And that that's another mind bender right there, right? That that puts a whole different twist on things. I I don't even want to put any time thinking about that because <laughs> that's too big of a mind bender for me. Unless you send me some kind of legislation or send me something, I would love to see something so that I don't waste a whole bunch of time going down a rabbit hole. Um, Liz, no, you didn't have to, but hopefully they will be thankful. Yeah, they they are thankful. Uh, still, you know. Strategically, you know, <laughs> um, Andrew, true. Thank you. Just needed to hear that. Yeah. Uh, Marsha, yeah. Prove that they're important to you. Yep, yeah, that's true. But they already knew they were important to me. So, <sighs> yeah, just. I, okay, so I'll tell you another thing that I did uh, right around the same time, which is going to work in my favor so that you guys don't all have to feel sorry for me right now. <laughs> um, another thing that I did right at the same time just a little bit before maybe maybe three weeks to a month maybe a month before we started having our teams track their own payroll percentage revenue so while they have been earning this extra bonus money they have also been reducing their payroll percentage revenue at the same time and creating new habits of of lowering that payroll percentage revenue so that actually is going to really work in my favor because when the money's gone, they're still going to be earning me a lot more money. So, yay, yay. Mm -hmm. uh, little, little bit of a not win and then a, a good win, a, a, a previous, a future win. Yeah. Um, I yeah. saw it last night, but I can't remember where. I will have to research it. Yeah, wherever you saw it. I love that, Linda. The whole payroll revenue <laughs> thing is something that, uh, you know, I don't know if everybody fully appreciates what you're what you're talking about there, but we we talk about some of the most important KPIs in running your business, and time and time again, whenever we're we're working with cleaning business owners, looking at their numbers, figuring out opportunities for for, for them to be more profitable, more successful. That is that that's if that's not at the top of the list, it's certainly in the top three of absolutely that, that are important. Maybe on a on a, on so a one of the numbers. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. And maybe on a subsequent call, we can actually get into some of some of those metrics a little bit more. It's a little little off the beaten path, but you know, if we're trying to you know talk about smart business moves, that's really kind of at the heart of it. Is 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 managing some of the some of the more basic uh, metrics in our business. So the Mastermind Accountability Groups, we have a workbook. And that that we use, in, um, and we, we track five things. And when people are like, "Oh my gosh, it's so hard! I don't know how. It's just so difficult." I'm like, "Okay, start with one. Let's just start with your PPR. Let's just start with your payroll percent to revenue." And you know, three weeks in, they're like, "What the heck? I know I can see why I don't have any money." Yeah, I could see why you didn't have any money on day two. <laughs> so I'm glad you can see it now, too. So, uh, you know, I, I love that concept, too. That's uh, something that we do 
teaching foundations, and it's always such a hard, hard class. And I'm, I'm forever grateful to you, Tom, for teaching that class or multiple classes because so awful. Um, but I think it's like one of the best takeaways for it's people. Like everybody's excited and crying, and it's like, you know, my yeah. life. Yeah, I did love the class where we had like the whole class was crying because everybody was so happy to have this information. I love that. Uh, okay, let's see. I have my LLC, but not having employees yet. So I'm still a cleaner. I am getting pandemic unemployment right now, but still accept all the cleaning I have. I can just reject all of them and live on unemployment. I decided to work so as much as I earn as less unemployment money I get but I feel like business owner and can't disappoint my local customers who really need my help. All right. So I, I think you're just saying Ekaterina that you're, you're sticking on unemployment right now because that's where you're making more money, but you also are torn because you've got these really good customers that you don't want to disappoint. And yeah, that, that would be my thinking. If I was trying to grow my company and trying to get my company up and running, I would definitely want to, want to be cleaning as many of those customers as I possibly could. More would be better in my mind. And if I could even hire a person to help me with that, I would I would do that. And then now is the, the best opportunity in my mind to for everybody out there to you know grow 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 your company because just there's so so many what do they call them golden golden what are they called Tom not not trampolines <laughs> not, <laughs> <laughs> not golden trampolines <laughs> golden nets <laughs> exactly what that would look like um, uh -huh. well, trampoline sounds kind of good too hey Barb we're kind of uh, let's see down to crunch time here. I'm going to just jump in real quick. Oh already? A little bit. Um, All right, you, uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to look at what Linda has to say. Okay. Oh, it looks like a very, very long shot. Linda, she looked it up. She found the information. No kidding. Really? Where is yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, she's got a link. She put a link in there. It's Forbes. in the um, Forbes. How do you copy those links? I don't know. If you're, can you... Uh, Within the app that I'm using, I can't do anything with it. I click on it, and it goes it here, but I can't. It won't let me go to it. If I'm in Facebook, can I just click on it? I I, I have to, you know, copy and paste. But you, yeah, if you can copy that out and I like, got it. I'm sending it to you. Awesome. Um, cleaning business today. We've got, you know, our two classes. People are still taking the uh, COVID-19 class, um, which is is here. We've talked about this before. I'm not going to go into details, but if you have, haven't done it, you got people out there who are cleaning homes right now. It's an awesome class. The uh, PA oh, I have one thing about, real quick, Tom, do you mind? I'm sorry. I had, um, I had two people today and the uh, growth group, they get they get the class for free, and they said that the the code wasn't working. Did anybody reach out to you? No. Could you check into that for me? Okay. Well, um, Diana, I mean, um, Derek Hart. I asked him to reach out to you. So, if you could just, I told him he could. He was trying to buy five five of them. To, sorry, guys. Sorry to, but I got to get off the call quick today, so I can't talk to Tom when this is over. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get it. Um, Thank you. Those, those, I appreciate those, it. those have expiration dates and I don't know, I guess maybe it expired. We need to fire it up. We're, we're moving everything over to the new platform too. We, uh, you want me to tell them to wait? Yeah. If you can wait till next week, that would be, be, be better. If it's, yeah, it's I'll reach out to you. Fix it, but we're kind of in a quiet time now because we're trying to keep things in sync and it's not going to be a lot of moving parts. Anywho. Yeah. He's got PPP money extended, so no hurry anymore, Tom. <laughs> uh, class yeah. four for PHC is coming out tomorrow. Uh, we just uh, kind of wrapped that up today, so we got a, a couple of things to clean up, but that'll be available tomorrow for, for those of you who are looking forward to that. Um, 
and, and the rest are coming really quickly after that. Yeah. Um, um, this is an awesome class. I know that we're kind of tight on time, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of give you the skinny version, but it's written for uh, house cleaning professionals, for people who are cleaning homes every day. It's an eight hour course. Uh, there's an exam at the end, you get a certificate of completion. Once uh, you complete all seven classes and pass the exam, uh, the new platform that we're moving to. And, you know, we're hoping to have that up and, and, and fully functional next week. We'll give cleaning business owners the opportunity to enroll their own people, track their progress, basically manage the, uh, the training, you know, within your own company. And, and that's going to be uh, a big, big improvement. Uh, cleaning business today, if you haven't uh, signed up or subscribed over here on the right, please do that our super secret passcode to get to all of our download goodies is here. And I am going to take that link. Uh, Liz, you're going to send me that, that Linda dropped. I just sent it to you. And we'll research that mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be able to speak to that tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you for that. That was super helpful. Andrew. Yes, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, was it Linda? Andrew? No, it was Linda, wasn't it? Linda, yeah. yeah it was Linda. Linda. Thanks, Linda. Yeah. Um, do you have classes for business owners? Yep, Tom just went over the classes that we have currently that are um, easily accessible, that have to do with some basic cleaning. And so for those of you also, unless I want to say this, for those of you that are looking into the HCT classes, when you are checking out the uh, materials and the contents of the class, you might want to check this class out as well, the, the PHC class, and, and check out the content there. Um, just keeping in mind that the PHC class is dedicated to the, the professional house cleaner, that that's who it's written for. Uh, Amelia's asking that's about... Say, Tom. No, you're good. It, it, I mean... Okay. In some regards, they're apples and oranges. You know, the ACT class is is basically a live class. You, you need it's two full days that you're going to be sitting in front of a computer, in like a webinar type setting. We've got you know this put together in, in, a, in a learning management system where you can do it on your own pace at your own time. There's seven different classes. There's modules within the classes. So you can, you know, over a period of time, just complete a class when it's convenient. And, you know, your, your, your cleaning professionals can do that as well. More, most importantly, this is accessible to, to the people that clean for you because you can buy a number of seats and you'll be able to next week, you'll be able to enroll those people yourself, your, your, your people yourself and coach them and manage their progress through this whole thing. And, you know, the, it's hard for a two day class just for somebody to not clean homes for two days to do, you know, ACT training. And I help put the ACT program together. I help write the book. I'm all about it. If you're a cleaning business owner and you've got two days to invest in it, it's an awesome class. I'm just being practical because, you know, I run a cleaning business too. That's why I wear this groovy shirt that I've been getting compliments on. And I can't afford to take cleaning techs out of the field for two days and sit in front of a screen and, and, and take that class. Plus it costs about, you know, three times as much. Plus you have to pay them for two full days. So really, you run the math, it costs over four times, maybe five times as much. So I could go on and on and on. It's just an option that, that you'd want to look at. Um, I dropped the link to where um, the the PHC class is and where you can, can, can enroll. That question came up. All right. Me, it was asking. We're, we're running late. Sorry, well, guys. We're yeah, running. Hopefully you got that, Amelia. I have a, um, a Facebook thread going with her. So Amelia, if you can't find it, let me know and I'll hook you up. Thanks guys. Appreciate you being here. We'll be back uh, tomorrow, five o'clock Eastern time. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.